Hi everyone. Uh, uh, I'm going. Go <laughs> no, go ahead, Jess. Um, so uh, th this uh, data cloud setup covers uh, um, a good chunk of the exam, like 12% of the exam. So we have divided this into two sessions, setup and the administration. So in today's session, we're going to look at the setup uh, features. Um, so how do we set up uh, the data cloud, create the users and permissions and all the things that we need to configure before actually starting out the data cloud usage. So we have here Deepti with us. Thank you very much, Deepti, for joining us and uh, willing to share your insights. Deepti works for Salesforce and she has done a lot of training sessions as well. So anything related to the data cloud, she is the pro. And if you have any questions, please post them in the chat. So they, I see a lot of questions about the recordings as well. All the sessions are recorded and um, they're uploaded to the YouTube channel. And thanks, Gilda, for the link. Um, so we have all the sessions recorded and uploaded. So we will be sharing the slide deck also as soon as possible. That will be linked in the description part of the video. You can find it there. Any other questions, please post them in the chat window. So Deepti, I will not take much time. I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Josna. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, I know we have joined trailblazers from across the globe. And thanks for taking out the time to uh, learn and uh, making this program a success. Uh, let's get started. Today, uh, the topic of the session is how to set up data cloud. I know in any, any uh, custom, customer projects, once we start getting uh, a project aside, first thing what, what you would be looking into is like setting up the system, right? Uh, so we'll know a bit more about how uh, data cloud setup is done. And we have another session uh, coming up next, uh, next after this, uh, I think on Friday or Thursday, uh, on the admin part of it. So both of it will combinedly give you a knowledge about how data cloud can be provisioned and administered in, in your office. Works. Pardon my voice, uh, I have a bad throat. So if you are able to hear me, do let me know. I'll try to uh, increase my voice as well. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so let me quickly give an introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Deepthi Kamath. I'm part of Salesforce's alliances and channels. Uh, been with uh, Salesforce for more than two years now. I come with around 15 years of uh, implementation experience on marketing automation. Uh, in Salesforce, I'm responsible for uh, helping partners build their capability and capacity around marketing cloud, data cloud. I would like to thank Josna here and this trial blazing community for giving me an opportunity to, opportunity to share my data knowledge with your, your wonderful trial places. Okay. Uh, so, uh, our forward-looking statement, uh, I know throughout this session, we might uh, share a couple of roadmap items as well. So please make all your purchasing decision based on publicly available, uh, 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 generally available features in data cloud. As you know, uh, there are uh, uh, many features which keeps uh, releasing on data cloud uh, to enhance the product capability. So before making any purchasing decision, please go through our uh, uh, generally available feature list so that you can make a better decision, okay? So today agenda uh, is around data cloud setup and in this we will talk about how data cloud uh, or where data cloud is residing. And we'll also talk about uh, how to uh, to provisioning and update your user profiles and permission, set, permission sets to ensure you see a data cloud app and the right permission is given to the user. We'll also talk about out-of-the-box connectors, which are, which comes with the product. And uh, while we do that, I'll also show you on the tool like where, where you can see uh, these out-of-the-box connector for seamless integration. Uh, we'll touch upon data abundance and data spaces. In, in next session, we will go a bit deeper about these topics. But in this session, we'll, we will give an intro about what data bundles are and what data spaces are. If time permits, we'll, we'll go through Q&A as well. 
Okay. Uh, so uh, what you see on screen is, is a general data cloud implementation life cycle. So here you, you can see there are two major milestones where we talk about data preparation and we also talk about data consumption. While data preparation talks more about how we can get data in, uh, harmonized into canonical model, whereas data consumption will talk, talk, sorry, whereas data consumption will talk about how this harmonized data can bring value to the customer, okay? So in data preparation, the first step with when we talk about is provisioning. And that's where we talk about the right level of permission that can be given to the user and the integration that can be done with the tool. So the first question uh, anybody would have in mind is, okay, where does this data cloud live, right? Is it a new product? Is it a different app? Is it a... a, a acquired product no right i mean from previous sessions you might already know that this is our own organic product so data cloud is built on salesforce platform so people who who have joined here and have already worked on salesforce uh, platform might be very familiar with the look and feel of how data cloud looks the additional uh, uh, point which we would want to talk about when it comes to data cloud is it, it resides on high performance infrastructure which means it comes with data lake or big data capability. And with this capability, we also have play platform uh, platform capability on it. So as this is metadata driven, and when, when we talk about capability, sorry, platform, it, it is metadata driven, right? Hence, we can uh, use things like reports, flows, authentication, which, which comes along with your CRM. So with Data Cloud, you also get a benefit of your Salesforce org, as well as the data lake big or big storage capability. Okay. So the next question would be like, how, we, how do we provision as a customer? How, where, where do we need to decide where, where does this Data Cloud org resides, right? So there are two ways a customer can go with when it comes to Data Cloud org. One is purchasing a standalone data cloud org, which sits outside of your home org, your sales service org, or within your uh, sales service org, okay? So provisioning in a separate org, like if you already have a sales service or a uh, uh, sales service org for your customer, and you want uh, you, you want one you want data cloud to be added on top of it. So that will be called as using data cloud on your home org. So separate org will be a standalone. Okay. Uh, provisioning in separate org creates a standalone system of reference with connection to any number of data uh, sources or orgs with no direct relationship with an ingested data source. A couple of things which you need to consider uh, when provisioning in this matter is this requires a new user. So for that particular org, you should have a new user and a core platform licensing in all in the new instance among other things. So this is most recommended and preferable uh, uh, type of provisioning where you have a standalone version and your sales or service org sits on a other uh, um, it sits on another org, uh, but there are instances where customer will still go for your home org, that is provisioning on course data source org. So it creates a combined system of reference that may sit on top of your system of record and even more likely of system of engagement. So there are a number of reasons to consider for provisioning this matter, including keeping admins and data aware specialists in an instance, they already log in into a regular basis. So users which are created on your um, existing uh, org can also be an admin or users on your data cloud org. Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see uh, when to use a standalone org. So, if, so on your uh, right, you can actually see your existing customer data orgs where you have sales, service, loyalty, and your order management, order management system. 
and you have a standalone data uh, cloud org with data lake capability. It makes sense when your uh, customer has multiple multiple Salesforce org. Maybe it's a region specific, and they have uh, orgs in uh, which which are brand specific. So that's where it makes more sense. If it has highly customized enterprise architects, where there are lots of customization done on the org, so that's where it, it's better to go for a standalone org. And if existing org is provisioned with uh, uh, regulated and audited uh, permission, so that's where we, we, we prefer going for a standalone org. And you want to keep your admins separate from your existing org and your data cloud org, that's where you can you can prefer to use your standalone. But while, while you do it, let's keep in mind, um, so in your new org, you are likely to need to build new custom LWC in your data, data cloud org because it's, it's, it's the data views which are provided or generated with data cloud is outside of your core org. So, uh, so a few points which which we can uh, talk about here would be uh, here the instances which are in your left is your service console. Just an example to talk about, uh, but this is your also a CRM instance which it which includes CDP Home or instance as well. The connection between auth provider and the connected app as well is well, as a named principle go used with named credential. Tells that authentication process and where to get authenticated. So, so that process is in line here. So it makes more sense uh, for CM org to be data source ingested into CDP. So the data which, are, which is residing in your service org can be ingested into your data org to create that unified profile. Okay, so let's see what uh, how it works when it is in, on an existing data org. So your sales service and top of it, you also have a data cloud. This is very straight, uh, uh, straight use case where customer has a single line of business and um, primary use case required here is to access data cloud via your out of the box LWC. So that, that's something which you can use. And if you want to have your service agent search for data uh, within the org itself, the data cloud will give a provision or your capability of using your profile explorer or data explorer. You can actually search for data within the service console as well. So that's where if, if the connectivity or if, if the line of business is very simple, that's when we go for an existing data org. Uh, something to keep in mind is data cloud. Is, I mean, there will be API uh, access to your Salesforce objects as objects from within this org, but uh, that can be replicated on your data lake as well. Okay, we'll talk about it in, in our advanced session, but this is just to give you a gist of where, it's, how, and uh, how and where the data cloud can be provisioned. So it's again. It's not a hard rule that it has to be on a standalone or on a, a existing data org. It all depends on what customer is looking for. Okay. So these are a few uh, uh, things which we can keep in mind. Uh, so as this is on CRM instance, um, administer can get a combined view of what is happening in data lake as well as under homework. So that's the biggest advantage it comes with. You don't have to have um, uh, administrator separated for your uh, home or sorry, your core org and data cloud. So configuration become, becomes much simpler then. Okay, let's quickly jump to see uh, the data cloud provisioning. Like uh, what while provisioning the data cloud, what is that we need to keep in mind? Okay, so if you are adding a data cloud on an existing org, you all all you have to do is update your permission sets. So as we discussed earlier, uh, we already have a user uh, who has access to both your data cloud and your 
your core org. So as it is provisioned on your core org, admin will remain the same. All you have to do is make that admin uh, assign the permissions, uh, permission set to an admin to data cloud admin or data cloud marketing admin. admin uh, you are all set. So you'll be able to see your data cloud uh, app within your core org. So if you are adding a new Salesforce org, you you will receive an email, uh, ad, or admin will receive an email with account details where you have to just log in and configure your uh, or configure your permissions and add your users on top of it. So that's the only difference between your uh, when it comes to provisioning it on core and uh, non-core org. <clears throat> So to manage data cloud users and their permissions, as an admin, uh, you should have a Salesforce administrator profile and profile set granted to set up Salesforce, uh, to set up your uh, admin user, okay? And uh, it's always recommended that you use standard data cloud permission sets and not create a, a custom permission set while assigning uh, rules uh, assigning user with the permission set. Okay, so that, that's something which we need to take care of. We can pick and choose like uh, there are multiple uh, uh, roles which you as an mark uh, as a data cloud a user can have on on the app itself. So you can pick and choose your data uh, uh, your rule set based on your permission set which are provided in your org. So in this screenshot, you can see you have data cloud admin, user, marketing admin. So here you can actually let uh, the user only view uh, uh, the data streams or even the deployment segmentation activations. You can control such activities using your permission set. You can know more about this permission sets on our, on our help site. Uh, it's, it's pretty detailed and it will let you know what kind of permission set you need to enable, disable in order to uh, provide uh, access to the user. But as an admin user, you will have an end-to-end -end view and access to whatever you do within the data cloud uh, itself. Okay. So as an admin, uh, there are a few additional tasks which you will have to make uh, uh, apart from uh, creating users or assigning a permission set. You will create packages in data cloud. Okay, so when I say packaging, um, so with Salesforce users might might already know you can bundle these, create data kits, and and use it and deploy it on other uh, data cloud instances as well. So as an admin, you'll also be responsible to do that. Uh, create or manage Lightning flow. So by defining flows and chaining it together, uh, data cloud processes such as ingestion, segmentation, and activation, you can like create flows uh, within and manage flows within data arc. You can also be an um, administrator for reports and dashboard. Um, so data cloud also exposes several objects like uh, data streams, identity resolution segment, et cetera, that can be used to create admin reports, dashboards to visualize the use of data cloud. You can also create sharing rules, um, so segments, streams, calculating site, et cetera. For example, as a partner marketing user, user can only see segments created for that particular business unit, but you will not be able to see uh, the segments created for, for the bigger picture or bigger marketing teams. So you can create rule sets on the objects uh, on, on top of your stream segments and calculating insights as well. Um, Identify your accounts functional domain. Uh, so the functional domain refers to Salesforce's public cloud infrastructure that is your hyperforce where your instance is located. So as an admin, you'll always you'll always able to see like where the data cloud is provisioned. Okay. And organize lightning record pages of unified individual records. So you, what you can do is you can create lightning pages um, with unified individual records on your uh, Lightning app as well. As an admin, you'll also create and manage data spaces. Data spaces is nothing but a logical partitioning of data in data cloud. Okay. 
So let's talk about the data cloud topology. So when I say topology, it, it talks more about how data cloud can act as an integration tool to get data into uh, the data cloud. So the, while there are uh, numerous uh, connections available, and as you can see, each releases, there are new integrations which are coming in with the data cloud. Here, we talk about the integration with your Salesforce clouds, where as a data cloud, uh, with the data cloud, you can, what you can bring in, how many instances can you integrate, and how we can define, uh, like what kind of data should enter data cloud, okay? So while uh, the numerous connections are available, it really doesn't mean that uh, everything needs to be configured, okay? If, Customer can pick and choose like, okay, I need data from only marketing cloud. I, I might not be able, I might not be able to use the CRM information for unification. So I just, I'll just use marketing cloud or S3 where I can get the data in and run my um, uh, unification. So that's something which a uh, customer can pick and choose. So uh, uh, data cloud comes with uh, many out, out of the box connectors. So as we discussed, uh, Salesforce clouds, such as your CRM marketing cloud, your personalization, it, it, it can be uh, configured in a Jiffy. It's just drag and drop, add your credential and you're done. Okay. Uh, connectors allow connecting data sources uh, to bring data into the data cloud. And most of these connectors had to be initially configured by the admin. So an admin, you are responsible for configuring these connectors while setting up your data cloud instance. Um, each, each of these connectors varies in terms of how the data can be ingested from batch real-time or near real-time time perspective. It's important for an admin to be aware of different ingestion pattern for these connectors. Uh, so there are, as I said, batch, batch, near real time, real time, right? So when we bring data from CRM connectors, marketing cloud, so it's an early update. So that's where we call that as a batch ingestion. Near real time, so your, your ingestion API process. So it, it does a micro batch of record for every 15 minutes. So you could consider near real time. Uh, when it's real time, it's your web and mobile connector that can process engagement for every two minutes. So it, it's considered like very real, real, real time in ingestion. Okay. Uh, before we jump into each of, we will pick and choose like like few uh, connectors and we'll talk about it. But before that, it's really important for us to understand what these starter bundles are. Okay, we will see these bundles in, in while connecting to the data source and you'll see more of this in while we talk about ingestion, but knowing what bundles are will become really important to understand our future sessions. So startup bundle is a Salesforce defined data stream, defined uh, which includes mapping of data sources into your DMO structure. So what you can do is, uh, when we get data from your CRM system, for example, there is sales cloud and we have data cloud and we want to get data from sales cloud into data cloud, okay? As a an user or as a customer, uh, it's there are, there are more than 1,000 objects which resides in sales cloud, right? And not all these objects will be essential for us to ingest within data cloud. So what these bundles or starter bundles do is, they take the standard objects from these clouds and uh, they'll have a mapping. Your, it will be mapped to your uh, data cloud data models. So this will be bundled together and will be, uh, I, it will be ingested within data cloud. So in the simple terms, you, you don't have to spend more time on picking what objects you want. You can just bundle it together and ingest it within data cloud. You also have uh, a freedom to pick and choose your objects. That also can be done. 
but for a starter you can you can use your uh, for example in sales all you need is your account leads contacts your opportunities so all that can be bundled that will be bundled ahead i mean you don't have to do anything it's it's there for you you need to just invest within the data club so that's that's about a, a data bundle so here we already have data bundles for your sales service loyalty uh, b2c commerce your marketing cloud and marketing cloud personalization so just an example for marketing cloud starter bundle so it will already have uh, uh, your uh, objects or data from your data views that is for email you will already see that it's already bundled with bundled with sends open click bounces for mobile connect you can you can see that it, the bundle will uh, the data bundle will already have uh, data from send delivered and delivered so one thing to, to consider for data uh, for marketing cloud is it the look back time is like 90 days so that's that's what you will see within uh, once you ingest data from marketing cloud. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's let's talk about CRM connectors. Uh, so what, here, um, when we talk about CRM connectors, I'll, I'll quickly show the screen uh, in my app. Uh, I, I'm sure. Uh, uh, can can someone confirm that they are able yes, to see my screen? Can. Yeah, we can see. Okay. Okay. And I'm sure this screen or this uh, page is very uh, annoying yeah, because I, I see. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see uh, the setup screen. So why uh, to navigate to the setup, you have to click on, uh, on this button and you have to go to setup. As an admin and you will be able to see the home page. So this is already set up. I have given a uh, permission set, and uh, that's the reason I'm, I'm I'm an admin here, so I I can see the setup screen. So on your left pane, you can actually see the out of the box connectors in in the tool, right? So when we go to Salesforce CRM, so I want to bring in data from your sales service org, and I need to connect that into the data cloud. So what you have to do is select Salesforce CRM. <clears throat> and um, so as my org is already connected to it's it's on a uh, 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 it's it's on a home org so it's already connected to a home org and you can see your standard bundles uh, along with it so these are something which i can i, I can install and it will give me an option to add the bundles related to sales and crm but uh, if i go here <clears throat> So here you can see you have options to ingest data from your home org, that is where data cloud is provisioned. You can also connect to another org. So if your sales service is sitting outside of your home org, you can do that. All you have to do is click on connect and it will ask you to pick the, or, or it'll ask you to enter the username and password for your uh, org and and that's it, you, you are good to go. The connection is made between your data cloud org and your um, uh, your or say, Salesforce org, which is sitting outside. You can do similar thing with your sandbox as well. Uh, so please keep in mind, there is sandbox for your uh, core org, but for data cloud, we still do not have a sandbox org. Um, so here you can do a connection between your uh, sandbox org and data cloud org as well. Okay. Um, something which needs, which we need to consider for for Salesforce connector is CRM supports your one to one. So you can connect to one CRM, one CRM to one data cloud, one to many, and many to one connection. So this is supported for all CRM connectors. A uh, typical example for one-to-one -one connection will, will be the production to production environment, uh, where uh, yeah, or another example would be your home or where you have loyalty cloud and uh, you have same deployed in data cloud instance as well. So for one-to-many, the good example would be uh, 
where data from single CRM org needs to be segregated by region or brand or to maintain data access restriction between the CRM at a record level. So that's where you can do one-to-many connections as well. Another example is to uh, adherence to the deploy deployment lifecycle. In this case, uh, development and production environment have to be like separated. So that's where you can go with one-to-many. So more than one CRM instance, that is many to one, is um, scenarios where brand data is aggregated from multiple CRM instance into a single data cloud instance, where you are connecting more than uh, one CRM org with your data cloud. That's where we talk about many to one. Uh, some other thing, other thing which we want to consider here is CRM connector is set up by here again. Data cloud admin is responsible to do that, and using starter bundle, which makes your life simpler and you can, you can just drag drop, add, bring whatever you want from your org. Uh, so pictorially, just, just to show like how it works, uh, your org and your data cloud org, it's one to one, one to many and many to one. So there is Amazon S3 connector as well. So we talked about uh, one Salesforce cloud where you can bring sales service data in. Like, what if I need uh, data from a third party system? Okay. I have point of sale, uh, which is connected off, uh, which is collected offline and it's not stored in any of our, uh, our data uh, in our uh, Salesforce clouds. But there are point of sale information for information which is sitting outside and you want to get that in within data cloud so you can use your amazon s3 connectors uh, the process of setting s3 connector is slightly different from uh, the other connectors um, you don't need to be an admin to use amazon s3 connector because to connect s3 there is um, nothing you have to do on a setup screen so let's go back to the screen this uh, I'm sure uh, you have seen data stream. I, I know uh, millions of they give a walk on what data streams are, but let's see how we can set up Amazon S3 within our data cloud. Uh, just to if we go here, you can you, you don't see Amazon S3 here, right? Because it's not something which an admin does. So if you go here and click on new. <coughs> So you have Amazon S3 here as a data source. So every time you you want to bring the data in, you need to enter your bucket information. So like where the data is stored on uh, Amazon S3. So your uh, bucket information, your access key, your secret key, and file type, everything needs to be updated here. And every time you create a data stream, you need to give the, give the access key and uh, uh, the credential uh, because unlike other connectors where you just enter the credential once and you can just bring the data in but for Amazon S3 something you need to consider is you need to enter username or credentials every time you bring in a new data source uh, new data source from Amazon S3 so that's that's the only difference between your Amazon S3 connectors and other, connect and other, other connectors which we have <clears throat> okay, let's go back. Um, so as we said, so configure you need to configure it individually at that data stream level, and single data cloud cloud account can connect to multiple S3 buckets. So you can control because each screen will give you to enter your credentials, right? So you can decide like every data stream can be. Uh, multiple data streams can be created in, in a single data cloud account and with uh, multiple S3 buckets. Um, so the other connector is Google Cloud Storage Connector. So uh, again, to for the same purpose, right, where the data resides outside of our clouds, you can use Google Cloud Storage. Uh, this will allow you to connect data from Google Analytics or Google BigQuery with Data Cloud, which can be used to just for data ingestion. This allows you to enrich Data Cloud profiles with Google Analytics data. 
um, one example which I can think about is a data cloud segment of customers who have uh, browsed for running shoes on the website in the past seven days, but they haven't purchased yet. And you may want to activate that audience for a personalized omni-channel messaging to influence their uh, a behavior to complete your online purchase. So with that, that's something which we can think about when, when it is Google storage uh, ingestion. Okay. Um, so storage, uh, we can connect five Google storage uh, connection per org. So currently that's what is being supported. Um, and data files from uh, your Google Cloud buckets are kept in sync RE with data cloud. So this it's an early refresh. <clears throat> Connection with marketing cloud. Um, so something which we keep talking about. So bringing because the engagement data, customer data resides there and you want to bring that in. So as we saw, marketing cloud also comes with a starter bundle where you can pick and choose whether you need email related data, your uh, uh, um, engagement, your mobile so you can pick and choose the only caveat for marketing cloud is it's always one-to-one -one. okay one marketing cloud <clears throat> one marketing cloud instance with one data cloud instance um, so something which you need to keep in mind is um, data cloud will create the, so once the connection is made between a marketing cloud and um, data cloud data cloud will create a set of automation and automation activities in marketing cloud, okay? These automation keeps transferring data from uh, uh, data cloud to marketing cloud and marketing cloud to data cloud. So as an admin, you should never alter these uh, settings once it's it's done. So let's, uh, as a marketing cloud user, you should not be, you should not be changing any of the admin setting or, uh, the connection which is built between marketing cloud and the data cloud. Okay, now for now, it's, as I said, it's only one EID that, that is supported. And when the connection is made, the connection is done with your enterprise ID and, and not your child business unit, uh, the ID which is there for your uh, business units. So let's quickly see uh, how it's done uh, in the tool. <clears throat> If we go to marketing cloud, so this is where you will enter your credentials. So it, it will um, open in a different window where you'll get a marketing cloud uh, login where you'll enter your username and password. So once it's done, the connection is made. <clears throat> It's already connected, so I I I not touch that. <clears throat> so here, so my um my marketing cloud account is already connected to your enterprise uh, that is your enterprise ID. Here you can pick and choose. Sometimes customer may just want to activate uh, data onto marketing cloud. Uh, so that's where you can only make, uh, you, you can pick and choose the business unit which you want to activate on uh, marketing cloud. But if you want to set up uh, your ingestion as well, where you want to bring in data, you can do that here, okay? If you click on manage, it will give me an option to choose like where you want to uh, which business unit or which sorry which bundle you want to select? Uh, you can control that here, and you can here you can select everything. But in data streams, when you go once you go to data streams, you can select whether you want only email, mobile connect, or mobile push. push. Okay. So when you click on next, <clears throat> here you'll also you can select your business unit from which you want to use your uh, data from. So though it's made, though we have made a connection at an enterprise level, here you can like control like what uh, your uh, data cloud users should see in terms of business units, uh, the, uh, the data from business unit which they want to ingest, okay? 
So this is with uh, data cloud, sorry, data cloud and marketing cloud. Um, Um, so as I said, customers can pick and choose the business unit for activating the segment uh, on the screen itself. And uh, this is something which you want to keep in mind. Uh, so they, you can connect one to one. So that is still a, a use case. Multiple data cloud uh, instances can access data from single marketing cloud instance. That is still doable. But in single and data cloud instance, you cannot have more than one marketing cloud uh, integration. So that's something which you need to take care. So if you're prepping for uh, your data cloud certification, these are the questions which you might expect, like what kind of connections between each of these, like what happens when CRM connects, what happens when marketing cloud connects. These are things which you might want to uh, keep in mind while, while you're preparing for your uh, exam. Okay, um, so quick view on data spaces, like what data spaces are. Um, see, uh, if customer wants to uh, segregate the data uh, in data cloud, they cannot keep purchasing data cloud, multiple data cloud instance, right? So region-wise or brand-wise, if they want to segregate, it's, it makes a logical, uh, logical decision where you can actually uh, uh, create a partition within data cloud to uh, uh, bring that data in. So that's where uh, from our previous releases, uh, we, we, we came up with data spaces where it will give an ability or freedom for the customer to segregate data when they ingest within data cloud. So data spaces are nothing but those are the logical partition to organize your data metadata processes to multi-brand geography or department specific use cases how it works um, every capability and feature of data cloud platform like uh, becomes data space server. so it becomes exposed to data spaces apps on data cloud run their users and system data services in context of data spaces so when you ingest when you add, when you segment, so exactly that's exactly gets replicated in your data spaces as well. It's just so between data spaces and your actual data cloud, there is nothing much UI difference. It's, it's just uh, uh, you, you just add that within like business units, right? You see in marketing cloud, so something like that. Uh, so this this helps apps to easily build features supporting multi-brand use cases um, and how this will help customers. As I said, they can use single data cloud instance and sub segregate content and, and, and provide each data spaces to its unique data model or identity insights and more. So when to use and when not to use data, data spaces is something which is on, on your screen. So if there is single, data cloud for multiple brands that's where you will use it um, and department segregation that's what we talked about you will not use data spaces when it is across the region and unification has to be done on 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 these regions like you need one unified profile on this so that's when you'll not be able to use it uh, it's not a data residency solution so you will we do not recommend using this as a sandbox solution as well, but you can still use it because at the end of the day, the unified, unified uh, uh, records will be still in your data cloud instance only. So that's where you will not be able to use it. But there are few uh, uh, partners or who, customers who are still using as a testing instance where they ingest data and do the, all their work on on data spaces so that's that's where that's where the data spaces are being used <clears throat> with that uh this is what i had for today uh, i know we still have time and we can take a couple of questions uh but just just to recap what we learned today was like how data cloud can be provisioned uh the difference between Bringing data, bringing data cloud on your home or, or a standalone, or we understood what kind of difference it can bring. We also saw like while provisioning the things that 
keep in mind to keep in mind like what kind of permission set you need to provide so that's something which we learned we also saw the topology like uh, when we bring in data from different data uh, uh, data sources out of the box connectors what kind of uh, connection needs to be done things to keep in mind um, and we saw the data spaces so other things like an admin does where they can create reports dashboard and all will be created will be I talked about in your next session where my colleague Gudge will talk about it and show a couple of demos on it as well. But before we go there, let's quickly jump into the tool to see a couple of more uh, uh, couple of more connectors. Uh, something which I want to talk about is Interaction Studio or your personalization. Okay, where you can bring in data from your marketing cloud personalization to your uh, interaction studio. So unlike marketing cloud, personalization has many to many, one to many. So you can bring in as many uh, uh, interaction studio uh, data into uh, data cloud. The only caveat would be like one data set. So in, in personalization, you have multiple data set, right? So one data set can be connected to only one data cloud instance. Okay, you cannot have data set one, two, three connected to CDP app one or sorry, sit data cloud one, data cloud org or multiple data org. So that's the only thing which, which um, uh, you need to keep in mind. So if you click on new, it will actually open with your uh, entire marketing cloud uh, login and it will ask like which person, which data spaces you want to bring in. Uh, let me see if it allows me to do it because it's already connected to, <clears throat> I have only one data space. So I think it will it will just create, uh, update the existing one. But yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Like you can bring in uh, data from Interaction Studio to, and you can add multiple Interaction Studio in, uh, data spaces here. Sorry, not data spaces, data sets here. Uh, but same data sets can be, cannot be used on a different data cloud instance, okay? Uh, external activation platform. So we, we spoke more about how to, bring, how to bring the data in. So we also need to see like how to bring, get the data out. Um, so there will be, uh, there, are, there are use cases where you need to publish your unified individual or lookalike segments back to your advertising platform or external activation platform. So here in external activation platform, you can actually, uh, so here you can actually see your currently supported are your uh, Amazon ads and Google ads and Facebook where you can act, push your uh, <clears throat> segmented audience to these ad platforms. You can add more as well. Uh, it's just your apps which are on um, yeah, the apps which are built on your app exchange, our app exchange partners can actually have these uh, individuals, uh, uh, unified individuals activated on their platforms as well. So this is where you do it. We have uh, additional connectors as well. Um, so you have Microsoft Azure Blobs and you have Blob Storage and you have SFTP. So this is something which uh, came uh, in our recent release. Uh, the SFTP solution where you can bring the data from your uh, FTP to your data cloud. So you have to just configure the credentials and this is where you can uh, uh, bring the data in. And with that, um, if we go to data streams, so data stream will actually give you an option as to what you need to bring in. So if I've already configured data marketing cloud there, right? So that's why it's, it's visible in, an, in my data stream. So as and when you configure your connectors in connectors in, in your setup screen, um, your ingestion or data streams will have that option added here, okay? Um, you can, if you select marketing cloud, so you can actually select the uh, data spaces here in your data stream while, while ingesting it. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have uh, that enabled, so you cannot see that. 
But let's go to the next sheet. So here, see, this is not giving me an option, right? Because I did not complete my step there on my screen. So that's why it's not allowing me to select the data bundles. But what I can do is I can select the data extension, extension individually, right? So you're not controlled by those startup bundles. You can still have uh, flexibility to get the data in using your data extensions. So that's something which you can do. And even in your CRM, right, you can pick and choose the objects as, as set. So with this, uh, um, this is what I had for today. Uh, let's quickly, uh, just so you have any questions which, which we can take up. Um, firstly, thank you very much, Deepthi. This is a very useful session, not just for the people who are going to take certification, but also for someone who is planning for the data cloud implementation. There are many things that needs to be considered and I see a lot of positive feedback uh, in the comments uh, as well. Thanks for the wonderful presentation. And considering the last topic that you mentioned, I see a relevant uh, question on that. Can SOAP objects be injected into the, can SOAP objects available for ingestion or as data bundles in data cloud? Uh, so as, as I mentioned, right, so these objects uh, are exposed in any data cloud and when it comes to SFMC SOAP objects, right? Uh, I need to check because as far as I know, uh, that can be done through your APIs uh, within data cloud. You can, you can do it as an SFMC or your uh, API ingestion, but not as a data bundle. Uh, but I, I need to recheck on, on this. Good question. Uh, this is from Osai, right? Good question. I just I just make a note of it because I need to double confirm on, on this, uh, Osai. Yeah, thanks, Deepthi. Any other questions, please post them in the chat. Um, so we have a few more minutes. And if you have any questions apart from this session, the other sessions or any other questions, I'm gonna share the link to the form uh, for the Ask Me Anything panel. So we have uh, this on the 12th day of the bootcamp. So fill this form out. And I will also fill some of the questions which are which we are not able to answer during the session due to time constraints. Uh, just, just now, if possible, please share these questions with me. And I, 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 my, I will be joining session with Gaj next, I mean, on, on Friday. And let's see if we can take up the questions there as well. That's that's wonderful, Deepthi. I will be sharing the questions with you. So I have uh, one more question in the chat. Um, let's say we do not have the marketing cloud. Uh, can we still see the marketing cloud connected in the data cloud? I think yeah, you can still use because it, uh, as I said, customer has an ability to pick and choose the data which they want to bring in. So these marketing cloud um, connectors will still be available. And only if you have a credential or a license for that marketing cloud, you can you can bring the data in. And but if you do not have marketing, it is, it is still okay. Right. Yeah. Um, can we connect multiple Salesforce orgs with separate data spaces of one data cloud? you can bring in uh, multiple say, sales org within and that's where the segregation will take place and when you uh, bring the data in and while creating the data stream you can pick the data spaces where that crm or uh, that org data needs to reside you can still do that awesome i don't see any other questions Deepthi. Um, let me check okay I think we can take one last question. Why Interaction Studio and Marketing Cloud are different as Marketing Cloud contains Marketing Cloud personalization inside it? Good question. I mean, we keep hearing this and there is a, there's a big debate going on as to why do we tell that it's one-on-one -on -one and one-to-one. -one. But yeah, to make uh, this simpler. So personalization resides on a different instance, right? So it's, it's though it is a marketing cloud app, it resides on a different instance. So that makes the life easier because it's not it's not that I'm connecting with multiple personalization uh, screen, or it's just 
the data sets which we are bringing in. Um, so because it resides marketing cloud on different tenant and interaction studios on different tenant, it becomes easier to bring multiple interaction studio instances within data cloud. Um, again, uh, future looking, forward looking. Uh, so we also have plans of bringing uh, multiple EIDs within data cloud. Again, I, I just want to tell it in good faith that this is still forward looking and we should be able to solve marketing cloud issues as well. Hopefully soon. <laughs> Thanks for the great answer. So I think those are all the questions, Deepti. So thank you very much for your uh, patience and sharing all those insights. And thank you, Thank Gilda. you, thank you Jyotsna. Thank you, Gilda. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you again next uh, Thursday, and we will cover the admin part of the section, and we will be sharing the recording shortly. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Good day.